Du, 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 that's the first stage of the class. The next thing I want to do, I'm actually going to kick this guy over for now, and I got to get something up to a boil here. Okay, my crappy little stove here. And yeah, that's a big flame for that little pot, but it still gets it up faster than, than anything uh, that I have here. Unless I bust out my induction burners, I should say. Uh, so one pot is on the fire and I have a second pot here just with a little bit of water in it. So um, I have some, I'm gonna be working with spring onions. The menu today is uh, uh, the, in the second half is gonna be halibut cheeks that I picked out again at Sunfish. And these halibut cheeks, I'm gonna poach them off in a little bit of liquid wine and tasty things, right? And then I can kind of reduce that down till it tastes really, really good. And I can work some butter into it and I've got my sauce. As this is cooking, my vegetable of the day is gonna be cooking right along with it. And so the vegetable of the day is gonna be spring onions. I got all my burners on and I don't wanna turn on my fan. I just got a window open here. I'm getting a little uh, uh, warm, I'll tell you, ladies and gents. So you've seen guys, these guys, if you ever go to the farmer's market, aren't they beautiful, right? Isn't she lovely? Look at the long, luxurious green leaves on this guy and those beautiful, tender, tender little bulbs, right? That is food, right? That looks like a vegetable to me. So I'm going to kind of start breaking these guys down. I wanted to use the, the green ends of this to make my pesto. And so that's what I'm going to do is kind of cut these greens off and then we're going to blanch them and make a pesto out of that. And I'm going to show you how to clean these guys up. Sorry, I'm all over the road with this. I'm going to show you how to clean these guys up in just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to put them back uh, inside after I cut off the tops. And just a real quick zip zip. There they are. So there's a zip. And I'll leave a little bit intact. Because it's a vegetable and a little zip. And we'll put those guys away. And I'm going to blanch these guys off along with all of these greens, too. And I'm going to make a pesto that I can use around the house for different things. We'll see those red onions later. So um, you can see I kind of cut my greens down earlier, a little bit shorter, so they fit in my little pan. So that's what I'm going to do here. You know, let me give this another rinse, because I did it earlier, but I just saw something funky. Let me hit that again, and I'm going to cut them on down. All in pretty much one length. And again, the idea here is we're going to blanch these in boiling water, and it's going to brighten up the color on these guys. It's also going to kind of change the flavor profile a little bit from raw green onion or like raw onion, basically, to um, to more like a, a, a cooked leek or something like that, right? And so I'm gonna get a little cooking dynamic going there. We are gonna shock these things. We're gonna cool them off. I'm gonna chop them up. We'll squeeze all the water out of them, I should say, right? And then we're gonna chop them up and then I'm gonna blend them in a blender, okay? By the way, if you don't have a blender for this, if you're using a food processor, it's gonna be really, really hard to get a puree. When we're really looking for a nice puree, we go blender every time, okay? So that's what you're gonna see. I've got all of my greens together. And I kind of wish I had a little bit more water going here, I'll be honest. It kind of uh, simmered away while we were talking. Whoa. All right, so it's coming up. Whenever we're blanching, we always want to have a little bit of salt or a good amount of salt in that water. And so there she goes. And I'm going to drop these greens in there. And quite honestly, I think I've got just too much going on here. So I'm just gonna take most of the greens. I'll take the first ones and keep some of these pretty ones. I'm gonna drop them in maybe a little bit more. We'll kick those off. Because again, like I said, I'm, I'm just worried about the amount of water here and I don't need a ton of this right now. I think I can get a little more going. It's still boiling. Ah, heck, let's do them all. Let's do them all, chef. As long as I'm making pesto, I may as well do it. It's still boiling. Nice. Whoa. So again, we're going to blanch that until those colors kind of brighten a little bit. And I don't want to get too close to the fire. My camera starts melting on me. But uh, this shouldn't take more than about, yeah, maybe 30, 45 seconds here, okay? Some of the ends of the green onions are a little thick. These aren't scallions, right? They're, they're pretty heavy. 
I keep calling them green onions, but they're spring onions, right? Now, I should show you <clears throat> that I already have ice in a bowl. Always have your ice ready to go when you're doing this, okay? I should have talked about that even before they went in, but I'm gonna go ahead, get a little water in here. So I have ice water and these guys are done. I told you it's not gonna take longer than like 45 seconds or so. So I'm gonna pull them on out and they've brightened up. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And I'm gonna immerse them in that ice water there. And a little more. And we're gonna chill them off as quick as we can. And again, this is gonna give us a, you know, kind of change that flavor profile from raw to cooked. Let me get a little more water in there. Can I be honest with you folks? That's my last bit of ice there. So I'm hoping it'll cool off well. I'll get in there with my hand. And I really want to make sure that I am distributing the heat into this cold liquid here. I'm going to get rid of this other water. I don't think I'm going to be using it. It's actually leek flavored water. There's actually flavor in there. I think I'll save some of it. Add it to my cork wheel on, right? Kind of tastes like leek almost. And I've still got ice in there and I'm still shimmying around trying to bleed the heat out of here. And I'm going to move this pot over to the hot, the bigger burner while we're cooling things off. All right. And so we have done blanched those pieces. You can see it's a bright, beautiful green. Okay. Let's uh, let those chill out for a little bit. I don't want them to soak too long because we can leach nutrients out, but let me just see who's around and I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit too. Let me check my other feed here. Looks like I got Pablo out there. I got the best stove. <laughs> oh, I think he's teasing my stove, man. That ain't cool. And Lil, my cousin out there, and Ms. Laura, Ms. Brennan, what's that say? Oh, saw it before. All right. Okay, so my pot is coming up to the boil here in just a little bit. And I think that. Um, I think this, these veggies are cool, and that's what I'm calling them. I'm calling them a veg, okay? And so I'm going to start squeezing the water out of these guys. And when you do that, you want to work with a small amount at a time, but, you know, just enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but no more, because we really want to get that moisture out of there. Okay, there's one little bundle, and I'm just going to kind of lay out little bundles on my counter after they've dried, or not dried, but squoze. After I've done, squoze them out. Let me kind of show you this. I'm going to adjust that camera a little. So you can see, I'll get a little bit squeezed out. I think I'll get about three onion balls out of this. And there they go. Okay, I'm starting to see tiny bubbles coming up in my pot. You guys can see the flame under that thing. I'm not joking around. That flame is cranked as high as it'll go. Don't be alarmed, but we got to crank this thing. All right, so I just blanched and shocked my spring onion greens. The next thing we're going to do is make a pesto out of those. Before I do that, um, these spring onion greens, like I said before, they ain't exactly scallions, right? And so we have got to run our blade through these things to kind of cut the fiber because they're kind of fibrous going the long lengthwise, right? And so um, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to use my knife to cut these down. Otherwise, the blender is just going to have stringy fibers wrapping around the blade. This is a very, very important step. It will not work if you don't cut these things down, okay? So you're going to see me just do some down and dirty mince work to this stuff. So I can cut up the fibers and the blender can break them down. And so I'm just making a very small claw with my left hand and my right hand is doing that famous rolling motion that chefs do with their chef knives. Let me kind of pull back. Let me see if I can pull back a little. Change this angle a little so you can kind of see it at a little different angle here. That's a little better. Ooh, I like that angle. Okay, so I've gone through it once, and I'm going to go through this ball a second time, and it's stringy. You can feel it. We've got to break up those fibers. Rolling, 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 keep them doggies rolling. 
And that's all I know of that song. I'm going to turn this uh, flame down because it's just about at the boil and it's uh, it's kind of hot over here. And I'm going to work my next spring onion ball into it. That sounds weird. Oh, it's the spring onion ball. It's after the garlic cotillion. <laughs> oh, I got a million of them. I'm here all week. All right. Uh, that's that chopping motion. And I'm going to get into this mincing motion with my last spring onion ball. I like that a little better when I'm trying to rock and roll in the kitchen. I like something with a little beat or a little funk. And we are almost done. Just going through it the first time and then I'm just gonna chop through it again with my knife just a little bit more to make sure that it's broken down enough to go in this blender. These are kind of tough leaves if you think about it. I don't think you could walk up and pull one of these out of the ground and just start chomping away on this thing very easily. And I'm just hitting the boil on my pot over here. Let me adjust, see if I can get it. Yeah, you guys might be able to see both now. But, uh, yeah, and it's boiling. And I don't want it to boil away here. I want to simmer. So let me adjust heat. You see that flame go down just now? And I'm bringing it down to where it's just blah, 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 blah. A good strong simmer, but I don't want this rocking. If it's rocking and rolling, it's just going to be kind of dark at the end. It's going to be cloudy. Ugh, it's nasty. So a good strong simmer. And let me show you what that looks like. You guys see that? It's not a total rolling boil. And it's going to go like that for about 10 or 15 minutes, OK? Short broth or port bouillon, a flavorful poaching liquid, OK? That's what's over there. And we're almost ready to start making this puree, OK? The puree is all chopped through with my blade. And I got to steal this guy after all of that business. And uh, now I want to uh, go ahead and get it into a blender cup. So I think you can see that and you'll watch me just kind of, you can see through the glass. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cinematic. We're going to say that it's cinematic. Oh yeah. I tell you my, my hands, my fingers look 10 pounds heavier on camera. It looks like someone else's hand. That's so freaky. Oh boy. I wish I was on shrooms right now really have a serious spot about that. All right. Maybe that's next week, quarantine kitchen on shrooms. Let's see what the gods of the quarantine will provide. Okay, so before I start blending this, just let me clean up a little bit. Things are bugging me. I'm getting a little OCD here. So uh, move a few things around. My, my board is all gross. I got to do something about it. I got to rinse it off. You can watch me if you want. Come over here. I'm rinsing off a board. And we'll talk. There she goes. Rub a dub. And I just want to get that green onion off of there for now. There's not a heck of a lot more to, to prep. Well, I guess there is. I'm going to show you a little bit of something, I suppose. And I'm going to dry. There we go. Let's take another look at that pot, shall we, before I go over there. So check that simmer. It's beautiful. That's just what I'm looking for, for a corp bouillon. Let me just go over here and do one thing. Now, I'm not going to stir this thing, but I do want to kind of poke things down under the, underneath the water. And, uh, and that'll be that. 
kind of basting the top, but I didn't really give it an aggressive stir or anything like that, which we don't want to do. Uh, we stir this aggressively and, and it gets cloudy, right? We're knocking particles around. It's something we never want to do when we're making a stock. We don't want to get in there and crank on it, okay? Uh, so my blender's kind of over there. So it'll be uh, better if it's far away because it's going to be a little bit loud, but a few blender dynamics, okay? Um, when we're working with this, I can never puree this unless I've got some liquid. I need this to flow around on the inside and that's how we're going to get this nice smooth puree out of this stuff, okay? So if there's no liquid in here, you're going to see everything just instantly glom onto the sides and go nowhere. So I'm going to use a bit a little a little bit of liquid. What liquid can I use? Well, hey, I'm making this flavorful liquid. It hasn't gone 10 minutes yet, but I could certainly use a little bit. So here's a trick that I use with a strainer. If I need to snatch a little stock from a pot, this is what I do. So there's my pot. Boom. Here's my blender. And I'm going to drop a strainer in there. And then I can just pull out fresh liquid from inside that strainer. Okay. So now I'm adding a little bit of hot liquid in here and just enough. I only want enough liquid here. I want a kind of a thick puree. I'll just leave those things there. I want kind of a thick puree. And so I'm just adding a little bit of liquid, but if I need more, I just go get more, right? It's not like I'm measuring stuff here. What did I put in? Like two ounces with about, that's probably a cup of originally of the green onion leaves. So let me get on this thing. The next thing I'm going to do, let me get, get you over here. I've got this bar blender here, right? If you've ever seen bar blenders, it's just a toggle switch here. When you are spooling these things up, you've probably seen bartenders do this before they click it on and off and then on again. And that way it can spool up slowly and then start cranking. So that's what you're going to see me do. You're going to see me toggle it on and off and then back on again, and it'll start rolling. If it needs more liquid, I add more liquid. And let me add, by the way, a little bit of salt is going to help the process here too. It breaks down cell walls. So just a little salt. And away we go. I'm just going to use, I don't, I don't like the lid that they give me for my blender. I just like a plastic lid. Okay. So that's what I usually use. I just grab one and on the top it goes, you're going to spool on and off and on. I'm going to poke it with a stick in a minute. I'll get you a little closer, about as close as I can get. You guys see how that's spooling around in there? That's what I'm talking about. If it's not rolling, put in more liquid. Now there's some chunky stuff around the top, so I'm gonna work that back in using my trusty spoon chilla. And uh, we're gonna get it back on there and we're gonna smooth it on out. By the way, there it is right there. It's looking pretty smooth, I gotta say. I'm not seeing big chunks anywhere except up on the side. And usually I do this right in the beginning, but I wanted to kind of show you that little spool while it was rolling. Now, sometimes, by the way, you know, when we're making a traditional pesto, we're using oil or something like that, but I don't want to blend oil into my sauce later. So I'm just doing a puree here. It's not really a true pesto. Okay. And I'm going to zip, spin this a little bit more. I don't think I need an adjustment on that liquid. I got, I got lucky. And I love the color. I love it. On and off. A little liquid, that's puree right there. When we used to make like infused oils and things like that, we would leave it in that blender until the motor heated up and it would actually like warm the oil, the color of the oil into, or warm the color of the herb into the oil, right? You know, it was just the heat of the blender that was doing it. We just leave that stuff going. It just drove me crazy after a while. But uh, hey, it was, a, it was an 80s thing to do. Back in the 80s, working in the big city. All right, um, let me throw that in a little bowl, I think, and chill that a bit. I think that would be nice. Oh, and I think that would be a weird color to go with that green. And when I say weird, I mean good. 
so uh, the stock's going fine and we are just pulling this out and I'm gonna start chilling it in the fridge. That's a beautiful little puree and I'm utilizing the greens on those spring onions. I'm also going to be using them for a little chopped herb on the top of a little something as well. Now, now that they're out and proud, that green onion puree that I've got there, I'll rinse a little. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and taste that and check my seasoning because I want every element of my food seasoned properly so when they come together onto a plate, the entire plate is balanced, okay? So whip out a trusty spoon and here we go. I don't need much. Oh yeah, I need a little more seasoning in this guy. But I think I'm gonna leave it at that, just a little salt. This is just pure spring onion essence is what this is, okay? And it's going to be worked into a sauce later on, like I said, a white butter sauce, and it's gonna give it a beautiful color, okay? So I got a fresh spoon and let's give it another try. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, okay? It's, it's very reminiscent of kind of like that idea of a cooked leek or something along those lines. Okay, so I've rinsed off a few things. I'm probably gonna just reuse that little spatula there. And I can get rid of this blender business. Let me clean up a little. Oh yeah, it's a hot one in the old town tonight, I'll tell you. All right, so pesto's going in the fridge. And my uh, corpo yawn is cruising along love, uh, uh, nicely. I'm gonna need that and that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get a little taste of that. See if I'm getting any like veg vegetable flavor. See if I, that raw flavor of the veggies is gone. That's basically what I'm looking for here. Once that raw flavor is gone, the veggies in there taste cooked, the entire broth tastes cooked, you're kind of done making kind of a veg stock. I think I can cook this a little bit longer. I have another project I need to do. Let's cut a little fish, okay? Let me show you what I've got. Um, I'll show you the halibut cheeks first because we're gonna cook those seconds, so that makes sense. Um, let's do that. <laughs> so halibut cheeks, literally cheeks of the halibut. Whenever you guys see cheek meat, um, think about your face and think about the cartilage in your nose and in your ears, it's all soft. Now I gotta wash my hands, right? Um, but all of that cartilage cooks down when you cook something and it creates this richness, this gelatinous richness that is so good. And when you're eating these things with this, with this you know, gelatinous goodness, your, your fingers are all sticky and your lips are sticky. It's a beautiful thing. Um, anytime you're eating cheek meat, whether it's like, you'll, you'll see it a lot out there, like beef cheeks or veal cheeks, lamb cheeks, uh, and halibut cheeks, right? You're always going to get a very rich, fine dining experience, okay? And so that's kind of what we're playing with today. When you see halibut cheeks, you want to fall on them with intensity with intensity, okay? So here they are. They're just little nubby things, you know, and this used to be kind of a garbage cut. And I want, I left one kind of unclean because there was a little bit of skin on this guy and I don't want to leave that skin on there because it discolors when we poach these guys. If I was going to sear this guy, I kind of like crispy skin, but when you poach something, it looks gray sometimes and funky. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, I've kind of shown you a little cut before where we kind of create a little tab by sticking the blade, the tip of the blade underneath, and we use a thin bladed knife for this, thin this way, okay? I make a little tab there that I can hang on to, and then I turn my knife around and I pull on that tab, and I can shave that big old piece of skin right off of there, okay? I'm going to show you another way to remove salmon skin in one second here, but this is just kind of what I use to remove surface things on fish, on uh, fish. I'm gonna just throw that in my court bouillon, by the way, that little nub. I just tossed it in there for flavor. I'm gonna make another little tab here. Boom, look at that one. Big long tab, and then I just get my knife underneath it and pull it off and into the stock pot it goes. And one more time, here goes the rest of that skin, almost. Let me just kind of shave the rest off, like so. Soup. And I got a nice clean little cheek there, okay? Some of these have a little sinew in them. I've gone through and removed all of that stuff. They're nice and clean and they're kind of ready to go. I'm gonna put them back in the fridge for now. You don't wanna leave your fish sitting out. I think everybody kind of knows that. Oh, 
by the way, I had some uh, other fish scraps from earlier. I'm going to toss them in my court bouillon just to add a little flavor, I think. Let me find these guys. So just a few little fish scraps, and I forgot about them. I'm throwing them in here. And they don't need to be in the liquid very long to give much flavor. I'm going to wash hands. And let's talk about uh, cleaning some salmon skin. I'm going to clean the skin off my salmon real quick. I wanted to show you that. Anything I can fit into a lesson, the salmon had skin onto it, we are going to show you how to skin it. Anything I can fit in, it's all a teachable moment. Now, I just had some halibut on there. I'm not going to get too worried about uh, kind of washing the whole board, but I will just give it a quick little wipe. And then let me get my salmon out. And this is just Atlantic farm raised salmon, nothing fancy here. They really didn't, when I went there, uh, they didn't have uh, much other than like tail pieces, but this is perfect for, this is an economy cut, right? Buying the tail piece because it's just not as pretty and marketable, face it. Um, but uh, um, this is just what I need, like an economy piece that I'm just gonna poach off and break up into salads and things like that anyway. Now, sometimes with this salmon, when they pull off the filet, this is actually the spine of the fish here. And so I wanna remove that in the same manner I just showed you. I'll create a little tab there and I'll try and pull all of that salmon. Let me adjust that. I'll try and pull that whole line out and I'll show you another trick for this too that cooks will use. Oh buddy, come on. It's hard because this thing will break. Okay, I finally got my hands under there. You guys see me pulling that off? And I got most of that out of there. I'm gonna throw that in my court bouillon. When we're doing fish stock, we don't often use fatty fish like salmon. I'll show you another method on this other fish, okay? Uh, I'm not going to worry about this little piece here. And then let me pull the uh, spine out of this other one. The other trick for this is <clears throat> sometimes I like to cut my fillets longer. So I will just take a chef's knife and cut my fillet this way. Right? I don't always cut in that one direction. And when I do this, I can just kind of trim this off like so. Boop. I don't want to mangle it. You never want to, uh, you never want to bend your fish. You always want it laying flat. You guys get the idea, right? Still have little pieces on me. Let's just get that last little piece off of there. It's hard for me because I'm uh, my camera angle here. It's hard to kind of get in there. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you is how to get the uh, the skin off of these fish. Okay. Now these haven't been. Yeah, they still have their scales on them. So I'm going to take that on off. And plus, if I'm poaching, uh, removing the skin is going to help me, um, you know, uh, uh, soak up more flavor from underneath. So whenever I'm removing the skin, let me move this forward. I'm going to have to sacrifice a little piece of this meat back here. I kind of cut down but not through the skin and then I pull my knife all the way back to this thinnest part so I can make this turn here and turn flat and I'm going to hold on to that other piece with my left hand and I'm going to get this guy down on the counter as flat as I can I'm trying to not to sacrifice let me do this for now okay <laughs> now I got something I can hold on to you guys saw what I just did now that you can hold on to it I, I jiggle the knife and I pull on the skin. And you pull the skin and the knife stays kind of in one place. I just cut through the skin. Let me go from the other direction if that happens. This is a teachable moment. If you cut through the skin, you just go the other direction. So I was getting it really, really close there. You can see the fat left behind. Now I'm gonna go from this direction just into a corner here. And again, my blade is perfectly flat. And I just create a piece of skin I can hang on to and I jiggle the knife and now I can grab that skin and jiggle the knife and get the rest of that skin off. I want to kind of point out there's also a little fatty bit right there that I'm going to trim off. It's a little thin fat. Thin fat and I threw that in my pot. Now there's some scales on my um, board here so I want to kind of make sure that I clean those off and there's one piece. 
I don't think I'm going to be using this salmon skin for anything. It um, darkens my corporal yarn. So I will throw that in my compost. I'm going to add a little bit of a fish there. And I've got scales to deal with. I'm going to do the other two skins real fast. So here's the next one. Sacrifice a little piece of meat at the end. Sorry, fish. And then hang on to it. Get your blade underneath there. And I like using this stiffer blade. If I have that flexible blade, it tends to actually tends to tear into the skin a little bit more than a flat blade. And there it is. That one came off in one piece. And watching out for the scales. And here's the last one. Here's the full tail. And it's got a big piece of that white stuff in there. I thought that was something I might be able to hang on to. So I'm going to kind of sacrifice that bump on the end, get it back to the tip of my knife so I can get flat there, hold the skin, jiggle the blade, and jiggle the skin. And there it is again. No uh, scales on that side. I'll show it all to you in one second. Let me do a little cleanup here. Okay. 